Hello, it's me, William Zindale, back again. Hopefully with better audio this time. I'm still figuring out this whole laptop thing. They're kind of new here in 1536. You know. Where we last left off, I was becoming an expatriate, leaving my country, going into exile. For I had to translate the Bible into English. Why? Not just so that it was more fun to read, or that preachers could actually know what they're saying, both of which are good, but so that the common person, common man, could have God's word in an accurate way for himself. That is what I was going for. But I couldn't do that in England, so I went to Wittenberg, because Wittenberg had lots of other Protestant dudes, like Martin Luther. We became friends and we worked together. He had translated the Bible into German already, and invented a cool printing press. These had been around for a while, though. He was a little older at this point. Anyway, where was I? I had a point. I was going somewhere with this. Oh, right. Translating the Bible. I translated as much as I could directly from Greek, which was quite difficult, considering how rare Greek Bibles were at the time in Wittenberg and most of Europe. And I used Martin Luther's Bible, too. His German version was very good. And I speak German as well, as like six other languages. So I was able to work off of that. We got the entire New Testament done. It was fantastic. And then we got to start printing. Got a printer who was willing to do it. And then one of the printers got drunk and blabbed to the king. And so Cardinal Wolsey, that guy who was in charge of like, religious stuff for England for a while. He tried to track down all my copies and destroy them as they were being printed even. Interestingly enough, he just bought them straight from the printers, which encouraged printers to print more and even pirated a few copies of my Bible, but, you know, that's fine. The goal isn't making money. And, uh, him buying up so many Bibles actually funded us, which was really funny. And I was able to work on, you know, more translating, more printing, because he, like, tried to buy up the Bibles to destroy. Some other guy named Nix and some other people did that as well. It was kind of a thing, trying to buy up my Bibles, New Testaments that is, and destroy them, which ended up funding the printing. And a f hundreds of copies actually made it to England which is what I was going for. It was wonderful. Common people got to read them. Now, still not very many, but at least it was starting. After that, I had to flee to worms. The whole diet of worms things happened there. It's not where you just eat worms, though. It's the name of the city because, you know, not English names. And uh, diet was like discussion, but that's not really what we're talking about here. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, where was I? Worms, yes. I went to Worms, and there I started studying Hebrew with the Jews who lived there. Because in England, nobody really spoke Hebrew. Like, most of Europe, actually, nobody really spoke Hebrew except the Jews. And there were Jews in Worms. And since I was hiding in Worms, I learned Hebrew from the Jews. Worked like that. I am a polyglot, as I mentioned earlier, so... Learning another language, even something as hard as Hebrew, wasn't too terribly hard for me. I also had, like, really good schooling, since my parents were fairly wealthy. That was very helpful. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Anyway, I started translating the Old Testament directly from the Hebrew, which, you know, was a little easier to get because I was hanging out with Jews who had that sort of thing. And I was able to start getting through several books. I got through the Pentateuch. I had to switch cities up a little bit. I went to Antwerp. I went to... What's that place called? With M? March something? Ah, oh, it's been a while. I'm a little old. Not that old. Um... Marburg, that's what it Marburg, Germany. Went to Marburg, where the first Protestant university had opened, which was really cool. Protestant universities, that's a totally new thing. 
because like yeah catholicism was kind of big still like the biggest anyway so i was able to begin translating the old testament meanwhile my new testaments were getting all over england and martin luther's books were being published all over the place too lots of protestantism going on pretty cool time I had to live in secret but not too secret because some people were actually really nice anyway i kept doing that by 1530 yeah 1530 i had finished the pentateuch and uh a few years later, I had Joshua through Second Chronicles all the way done. I got Jonah done. And then this guy. Uh, Henry Phillips. He showed up. We became friends. And then he betrayed me during a dinner party to a bunch of soldiers who took me off to a castle in the Netherlands and arrested me. On what charges, you ask? Had I broken any laws? Yes, apparently so, but it was um, heresy and, well, translating and interpreting a corrupt version of the Bible, which I did not do. It was like a super accurate version, it was as accurate as I could get it, honestly. But yeah, I spent like 16 months, I believe, in prison, and um, that's currently where i am i had lots of free time though so i've been writing some letters uh and praying a lot you know this isn't the end for me even if i die which is kind of the plan for them they i think they said something about burning the stake or strangling don't see how you could do both but maybe i'm still praying and hoping though that god will open the king of england's eyes he will allow the bible to be printed in english and that uh well, a more accurate view of God's word will be spread across all of Europe, all the world, and given to the common people that they'll be able to read the Bible for themselves. Really don't agree with the Pope on that whole don't read the Bible or you die thing. But here I am, you know, about to die. Well, not necessarily. God could still save me, but he doesn't have to. And I still trust him because... You know, my faith in God's the most important thing to me. And that's why I'm translating the Bible. I want everyone to be able to know God like I do. And the way to do that is by reading his word. Oh, uh, what? Excuse, sorry, what? Okay, well, the guard just showed up. Uh, it's 1536 today. July, right? It is July, yes. Early July, yes. Six? Oh, okay, yes, thank you. Just a moment, I'm almost done with my vlog. No, yeah, I know. Okay, thank you. Anyway, uh, this should be my last vlog. Sorry, the series is so short, but um, took me a while to get this computer up and running since they don't have like Wi-Fi here. So I had to get like this little extender thingy hotspot. That was kind of hard. Smuggle it in. Anyway, just found out I'm going to go get executed now. And yeah, they're going to strangle. And burn me at the stake, which seems a little excessive if you ask me. <sighs> well, good life though, you know. And I uh, got most of what I want to do done. A little disappointed I didn't get to finish translating the Bible, but uh, I've got friends who are working on it, and I'm, I'm sure they'll get it done. Now, there actually was, I heard, one guy, 1535, the year I was captured, who, um, who did translate an entire English Bible. I don't know how good the quality was, but hey, it got done. This guy's name was uh, Coverdale, I believe. So that's cool. And I hope, I, I pray to God that he would open the king's eyes and allow the true word of God to be spread to all people, particularly in England, because lots of Europe has the translation now, but that's my goal. I trust God with that. See you guys later. If you're a Christian, because, you know, you'll end up in heaven and I'm dead and, you know, we'll get to meet there. Peace out. Ooh, mic drop. What am I supposed to say at the end of this video? I don't know. Younger. Whatever. God. I'm coming. Bye.